All right, uh, let's get going. Uh, this uh, series here we're going to start with will be on Clay U. Uh, we are going to go through the first four tabs, uh, basically. Uh, and before I activate Clay U, I'd like to show you something. Because a lot of times you'll want to be using hotkeys, right? But hotkeys will, will not be activated. So I want to show you how to activate those hotkeys. I think by default it's set to uh, inactive or something. So in case they are not working, uh, you can come down here to your command line, click in there and type in options to pull up your Rhino options. And once the Rhino options are pulled up, you can see that uh, ClayU is not uh, in here. It should be right below cycles, I believe. Uh, and it's not here. Uh, so you're trying to find out how to get to clay you and you can't do it, right? So let's go ahead and close this out. Uh, go ahead and activate your uh, sub D clay you uh, and give it some time. It'll load up and you'll see these icons appear, right? And you can click in any viewport and those icons will uh, move to that viewport. So any active viewport, they will be moved to. Uh, so here you can't get into your options from the clay. So what you want to do is go back and turn it off and then go back to your options line and then type in options, or you can right click in your options and just go back to the options. And, uh, now you'll see clay you is, uh, in the right below appearance, right by cycles and just click in that drop down and go ahead. Go ahead and click on hotkeys. Uh, and I believe by default, it is uh, not checked here, set as active, right? So uh, you'll want to check this box and you can pick from configuration one presets or you can uh, change to configuration two, which there are some changes. Uh, you can see here, uh, some of them change, what, whichever configuration you want to go with, or you can do a custom configuration and go through there and put in all your own commands for each, uh, each line, right? Uh, and also you can uh, import, uh, if you have, if you're a user of M9 or a previous program, you can import your, or you have a uh, matrix uh, gold at work and you do some at another computer at home or something, uh, you can uh, uh, import those into your other uh, program or other computer, or you can export these and then take them and load them into another computer. So I have just configuration one here active, so I'm just going to go ahead and take that and hit OK. And now I can go back to my uh, clay you and my hotkeys will be active uh, whenever I just click on my hotkey item there. Uh, right there, it shows up hotkey, right? And you can turn it off as well. Whichever, uh, now it's off. <clears throat> Uh, we'll talk about all these as we move forward. Uh, our first session here, we're just going to basically go into uh, primitives and talk about uh, all the primitives that we can use uh, <clears throat> and the way to set them up. And then we'll just go through these as well since uh, we're going to be, uh, you know, to make, because primitives are pretty boring by themselves. So we'll just add in uh, these to uh, explain these uh, commands here as well as we move forward. So our first one we'll take is uh, a plane. We'll grab a plane and it'll give you this uh, box here and it will show you your plane uh, out here, right? Now, there's several ways to manipulate this. You have two arrows for the uh, uh, Y axis and the X axis. You can move them here. You can move them with the handles here uh, to get it to a certain size or you can just go ahead and type in a number here. So we'll just do that real quick, uh, enter. Uh, and you can change uh, the amount of segments in the X and Y direc direction by just going in here. Rule of thumb though is try to go with as small uh, amount of uh, segments as you can, uh, and because you can always add more if you need them. Uh, but uh, the rule of, thumb kind, rule of thumb kind of is uh, just use as few as you, you, you have to in order to get to what you're looking for. So we'll just go ahead and take this. And you can see right now I have uh, basically the mode where it selects the entire object, the clay you object. Uh, so if I click on it, it'll click the entire object, right? Uh, that's, uh, that's our first one there. Uh, now it's kind of difficult to kind of really see the pink line is just like your analyzed naked edges, right? They are a naked edge. So anytime you see a pink line, you'll have to go in there and, uh, you know, close that naked edge off in order to make it uh, watertight, right? 
Now, I, I found that, and you'll see as we move forward here, uh, that uh, this is, uh, you know, your uh, shaded mode. It's kind of really difficult to see uh, which ones are being chosen for the most part and where they're at. Uh, I find that uh, ghosted mode seems to be uh, really good. And as you we move forward with the ghosted mode, you'll kind of understand why. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead, and that's kind of our plane. There's not really much to it. Uh, we can start manipulating it from here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and delete that one. Now let's go to our next one, which will be box mode or box primitive. And again, it's pretty much the same thing, except this time we have an extra handle for our uh, Z direction, right? So we have our uh, Y direction, our uh, Z direction and our X direction. We can manipulate it there. Again, we can use the handles here to manipulate these uh, if you want. And you can manipulate uh, segments, uh, however many segments you want as well uh, in here. Or you could just type them in. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll take this one. Now we'll kind of just uh, look at If you look at the box mold now with uh, the ghosted, you can see all of the, the image, right? And if you turn to uh, point mode, you can see those points on the back side as well as the ones on the bottom. And you can kind of really get a good uh, um, representation of what's going on out here, right? So we were in the, the box mode or the entire object clay you select mode, right? Where it was select everything. Uh, you can go to a face mode and select faces, right? Individual faces. Uh, you can go to curve, uh, which will select the lines, right? And you can select points, right? And if we look at the gumball here, uh, we have uh, our uh, X, Y, and Z direction. We also have this extra one, which is basically the normal direction. So if I drag this one out and I look at it, it's going right up at a pretty much 45 degree angle. It's going with the normal of that item there, right? Uh, so that's the yellow line there. Uh, and you can move it uh, any direction you want, uh, however you want, right? And we'll just go ahead and back out of that. Also, if we go to uh, a face mode, right, uh, we can click on one face and then hold down control and double click the one, one next to it. And it'll select that entire segment going around or we can change to that another direction uh, to keep manipulating uh, however we want. We just need to select one and then double click by holding control. Uh, and there's other selection modes here, which we'll talk about as we move forward as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, and then once select the mode, maybe you want to select the entire thing. Right now we have the move mode. We can go to uh, our uh, 3D mode or scale mode, right? And you can scale it in the uh, Y direction. You can scale it in the X direction and you can scale it in the z direction right and if you hold down shift and select one of the little disc you can rotate it in a 3d uh selection there as well all right so that's kind of uh, those modes uh let's go ahead and move on to the next one here i'll switch back to move mode and uh sphere right sphere again uh right now we have it at a quad and if you can see uh, it's four points right uh basically and you can change it to a polygon which is more like a pizza shape right but it gives you a lot more uh polygons out there to work with and you can change it uh size wise here you can also drag the size it only gives you one handle to do the 3d scale here uh and you can change the segments in all directions here Right, and let's go ahead and just take that and let's go ahead and select uh, uh, edges, right? So we'll select there and then we'll go down here, uh, hold down control and double select that and it'll select that entire edge. So now we can manipulate that out. Uh, we can go over and select this one here and then select that as well and then move that out as well. So there's, uh, you know, some quick ways, but again, uh, once we get to selection mode, there's, there's even more ways and we can use our hotkeys too. I'm going to hold off on hotkeys, uh, for right now, to, uh, just to give everybody an idea if you're brand new, cause if you're watching this video for primitives, you're probably new to, uh, to the clay you, right? Uh, and I will put timestamps for each of these primitives in there, uh, in our, uh, description below so you can jump to whichever one you want to uh, see right 
Uh, and if you select uh, the tire mode there, you can go to your object there and then hold down your uh, shift key and 3D scale it from there, right? So let's just uh, keep moving forward, switch back to our move mode. And we're at the circle. We'll go to cylinder. Cylinder is a little bit different. Uh, if you activate cylinder, you'll have a uh, hole, right? Basically, a cylinder with no top or no bottom. If I give it some shading, uh, you can see that uh, there's no top and no bottom. Of course, you can also drag any of them from that center point, right? Uh, and then again, you can use the uh, scale handles out here. Let's change it back to ghosted. And you can uh, get the radius bigger from here as well, uh, the height, uh, the segments in each one, and uh, the Z, right? Uh, and the, now this one offers two more, uh, well, three more. Uh, if you look at the cap mode, top and bottom, you can switch it to a polygon, which is like the pizza mode, or you can switch it to a negon, which is uh, like basically a plane, right? Uh, so you have different options in it according to what you're doing. Uh, you may uh, find that uh, useful. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's select this point and let's just drag him up a little bit. Something like that, right? Now let's talk about these two here. Uh, this will be your boxed or smooth mode. So right now we're in box mode. As you can see everything's kind of boxed off. But if we go to a smooth mode, you can uh, see that it goes ahead and activates uh, the smoothness of the item. And if you go to this one with smooth mode on, uh, you can see that it gives you, you can see the smooth mode through here, but it also gives you the box mode uh, to work with points. So now if we start moving these around, you can see in here, uh, the ghosted, uh, that it's moving those around uh, with the, our item. And if you go to, I think that's uh, X-ray, uh, you can get a little bit better look as far as what it's doing, right? Uh, but you 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 have the box mode for the commands itself. And if I go to lines and start selecting lines, uh, you can kind of really get a good idea as far as what's happening in, in your item. If I go to face mode, uh, face mode, and then select this one, hold down the shift, uh, control key, and it's like that. I get the entire edge, go to my scale, uh, and then hold down uh, shift, and then I can scale that entire image out. And you can really see what's going on out there, right? So you can get a lot of really cool shapes by doing uh, this kind of work, right? And we'll talk about this one in our next one, I think. Let's see. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of this one here. I'll go back to scale mode. And we'll go to, that was cylinder, we'll go to torus here. Uh, so now it gives us a, basically a jump ring, but you know these things can be useful. And these, again, grabbing from the center, we can move it around, we can make it thicker, or we can make it bigger, right? And again, we have the sliders on, over here that we can manipulate, and we have how many segments we want, and, uh, uh, in the or segments and then Z direction. So we can add more to the, Z. if you can tell, it's kind of giving it a little bit more shape there. Uh, and if we go to box mode, you know, we can turn that back off. So go to smooth, turn, turn that off, turn that back on. Uh, now let's go ahead and accept this real quick. <clears throat> now I'm gonna go to uh, face mode and we're gonna talk about the multi gumball one. So we'll, we'll go ahead and click there. Uh, now I'll select this gumball or this face here. And if I move it, it's kind of moving it from our uh, center direction, right? So we can move it in our center direction. Uh, but if I hold down shift and I select this one, I can get another gumball. And if I hold down shift again, I can get as many gumballs as I want. Uh, but if there's only one, it's pretty much going from the center of the item and moving it in the direction or the norm, depending on what you're picking, right? Uh, but if you put multiple gumballs out there uh, and you go to move it, <clears throat> so uh, you go to move, it's going to move from like an average of where those are in there. So it's not going to move exactly the same way. It'll move a little bit differently uh, depending on, see how they're, it's not kind of the same type of movement there uh, in some directions, right? So be aware when you have multiple gumballs out there that it, it is going to be uh, changing uh, as far as the point that it's going to be adjusting from, right? Okay, uh, so let's go back and let's select this and we'll delete.
and we'll go here and we'll turn off multiple gumball all right uh so that's our let's go to ellipsoid uh lipsoid is uh again you have uh, four uh, arrows out here length width and height thickness right so you can change it in many different directions uh, you can go for the quad or you can go for a polygon, which is more of a pizza top, top and bottom, uh, and manipulate it from here. And you, again, you can use the segments, uh, in any direction you want. If you go to box mode, you can kind of see it. A little. Uh, all right. So that's kind of ellipsoid, nothing really big here. And again, uh, moving it from that center point, you can do that as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and we'll just cancel out of that one and we'll move on to the next one. Our next one will be a cone. And we have a cone out there. And again, you have several handles out here that you can use to make it taller, uh, wider. Uh, and you can move it from the center again. Uh, radius, uh, again, you can do it from here uh, or here. And number of segments adding in. Again, the lower the segments, the better for whatever you're trying to do. And then at the bottom here, it's open, right? Because we have a pink line going on. It's a naked edge. We can cap that by using none. Or we can cap it by a polygon, which is the pizza shape type thing. Gives you more uh, faces to work with. Uh, or we could do the nigon, which would be one, right? Uh, okay, so that's that. We'll just go ahead. Did I miss anything? Rotate. Rotate, just rotate. Uh, scale, we talked about points, edges, uh, and we talked about that. Okay. So we'll go ahead and hit okay. And then we'll just grab it and delete it. And our last one here, primitive here we have is a uh, truncated cone or something. Just basically a cone with no top. Uh, and again, we have the naked edge at the top and the naked edge at the bottom. So you can switch it to uh, one, maybe a polygon or another one, a nagon. Depending on what you're working with uh, is very useful. Again, you have the handles to be able to uh, adjust however you uh, think is uh, best for whatever you're trying to do. Uh, again, the uh, segments in the Z, total segments going around the circle, uh, and you can uh, cap it in any way you want there. So hopefully this gives you just a very, very basic feel for all the primitives that we have and a little bit of way to adjust them. And of course, uh, the commands in our line here and how to use them uh, efficiently. Uh, so, uh, and we're gonna talk more about this as we move forward. Our next video will be on uh, the creation and we'll go ahead and talk about all these here and then we'll move on to edit and talk about all these and how to use them as well. So hopefully this will get you a little bit basic understanding as far as what's going on with uh, ClayU uh, and 3D uh, sub subdivision. And of course we have the new Rhino, which we'll talk about even at a later date. Uh, so thanks for watching and good designing. And hopefully this gives you a little bit of understanding as far as what's going on. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care.